Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the internet, thanks to the marvel of technology, I'm coming at you live from a little guest house in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard, and you're listening to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Unfoldment and Reinforcement, Radio for the Soul and the Transformation Station. Strap in all my brother and sister astral knots as we launch for inner space. I want to give a quick announcement that Swanji Viswa Yogi is going to be here like the third week of September. Swamji Viswa Yogi is a God-realized man from India. I had the blessed opportunity to oper- to interview him three times. And when you're standing in the presence of someone that is a powerhouse like this, <laughs> it, it consumes everything around you. And the information you get on multiple levels, multidimensional levels, uh, is can be, get really rich really quick. So stay tuned for that interview. I will give more details on the next couple of weeks as we'll get closer to that interview with Swamji Viswayogi. Listening audience, listen up. This is what Center of Light Radio is about. I've been doing some research. I got, a, I got an email sometime back from Heather, uh, my guest tonight, and Alan, asking to be a guest on Center of Light Radio. And I recently done some uh, research and I listened to one of Heather's uh, presentations. And let me tell you, I was floored. I was wild. This is what Center of Light Radio is about. This is why I do what I do is so I can be able to do what my guests tonight do. It's about having those divine mystical experiences that helps to amalgamate one in unity consciousness with God. And I'm sure you're going to be absolutely blown away like I was the other day when I did my research. So we're going to get right down to the show. In other words, it's time to get down to Center of Light Radio business. Heather Jamboy and Alan Feldman have practiced an advanced form of soul projection for over 20 to 30 years. In this interview, they will discuss a true ancient extraterrestrial past life and how ancient ET spiritual elders and saints taught their students through a spiritual apprenticeship how to master intriguing galactic and soul, spiritual soul projection to the planes, dimensions, planets, and heavenly universes to become God aware spiritual masters themselves. You can find more about my guest tonight at www.soultravelagent.com. Heather and Alan, welcome to Center of Light Radio. To meet you, Keith. <laughs> Thank you so much, Keith. It's wonderful. Absolutely, to meet you. absolutely. And um, if everyone would, if you hear a fan noise in the back, it's because of my phenomenal guest, Mr. Alan Feldman, has to have this going on. So what I would, would invite you to do uh, when you feel the time is right is go inside and send him some love and light. That's what we're about as well, right? So I guess I'm going to start with Heather. Uh, ladies first. <laughs> Heather, how did you come across this doorway? Was it via Alan or um, were you guys both designed to meet as to why you're married? Just give me the 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 intro, how this all began for you at least. Well, um, I would say that when I was a young adult, um, I felt deep inside, I felt very old. Even though I was 17 years old, I felt very old. And like I was tired, tired of, of this of this world, tired of, you know, the rat race, and that something was missing. And I didn't know exactly what that was. Um, but I I started re- reading tons and tons of books, anything I could get my hands on. But still, no matter what I read, I felt like something was missing. And finally, I just, one day, like a couple of years later, I broke down and cried. And I said, God, if there is a God, show me a real teacher. And I was spiritually guided to change colleges. And um, I immediately went to their library, closed my eyes and said, what am I ready for now? My hand touched a book. And the moment my hand touched this book, I had a flash of an out-of-body experience where I experienced this luminous, brilliant white world of nothing but light that went on forever. And I knew I found exactly what I was looking for, which is out-of-body projection. And on my journey... um, of course, I, I met <laughs> I met Alan in in a way that was no accident, and um, and we we began to compose a book together um, about our out of body experiences. You know, I've been I've been doing out of body travel for over 20 years, and he has for over 30 years, 
And when we started writing our book, at one point when we hit chapter three, um, both of us, we just had this sudden flash of what are called the soul records on the soul plane, which is a very, the soul plane is a, a plane that is far, far beyond the the lower levels of heaven, uh, far beyond duality. And we were shown this, this uh, past life we both shared together um, a long time ago, millions of years ago on a very ancient planet. And it was very profound, uh, very moving. What we saw, we saw in great detail um, about our spiritual lives and some profound spiritual tr truths that we both learned in that particular past life. It was on a planet called Ceres. Um, so, Heather, let me ask you this. Let's let's go back just a little bit. How did you, even though you met Alan and you began to mm -hmm. write this book, what began to launch you to have these out-of-body experiences? Obviously, before you got on your metaphorical spiritual knee and cried out to God, because I did the same thing, and believe me, I came from a space like you of such passion and sincerity. It happened. Um, but... When did the outer body experience, or in body rather, these glimpses of divinely realms, when did this happen and how did it happen? Did y'all just, did Alan teach you this? Alan, was this something you imparted to Heather and she began to have her own? <laughs> it's very contagious. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, she had, her, she had her experiences before she met me in this lifetime. Yes. <laughs> Yes, so what, um, is, what is a technique that you guys use to help launch you into these different dimensions and planes and bandwidths? Sure. Who wants to? You can, you want you can to talk about it, Alan. Well, oh boy, there's, there's a few of them. Um, if you'd like, we could share a couple with, with your listeners and yourself. We'd love um, that. That would be great. One of the, I just wanted to, you mind if I say a little bit? Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to say that Part of the problems with most paths or most groups is it's based upon dogma or superstition or it's based upon what somebody read in a book. And that's that's fine. I mean it's, it's not a bad thing because you can you can get a lot of insights from reading and and um listening to lectures and stuff. But the thing is that you without having your own personal experiences as as you alluded to Keith um really um it's sort of like just out it's sort of in your head you know it becomes dogmatic it becomes like a religion or superstition or beliefs yeah you know most people have all these beliefs that they carry around with them and so the the big thing that separates one of the things that separates Barton Carr from from um, it's not a religion first of all is that we show it's a path of through personal experience and it's not limited to the astral plane. A lot of paths that talk about astral projection or mental travel, um, we've actually mapped out these different planes. And this, we didn't do how it. Is that even, how is that even possible? By to actually mass, going map on the trip. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you look at the ancient explorers, you know, like Magellan and Christopher Columbus, and how did they map out the world? Well, before the advent of satellite systems and, and yeah. high-altitude yeah. aircraft, it was done the old-fashioned way. You know, it was hard. You you had to travel. And as you traveled, you'd have people who would scribe down maps. And and so this has been the case for forever, is that um, there's people that are spiritual travelers who have been able to go into these various planes, and they've existed before time, before the Earth, on these different planets, different planes, and these are the spiritual travelers who've gone to different planes and they've mapped these out. It's very exciting. So it's not a dogmatic path where you're just, you're told something and you're told to have faith and believe it. It's something where the spiritual travelers come and they tell man what's out there and how to reach it, but then you have to have your own experiences and your own mythology. And so Vardenkar is the ancient science of out-of-body soul projection, which is a science, it's an applied science where you actually practice it. So there are exercises you can do in addition to reading and studying, and that's where the, pr that's the proof is in the pudding, to have these actual experiences. 
And what you find is that they are mappable, that you can, through the, through the help of the spiritual travels, you can figure out where you are. So is there an exercise that you can share that you think um, might help? Uh, yes, because I'm, sure. ring- I'm over here wringing my hands, waiting. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, there's a, cu- there's a couple of them. I mean, there's a lot of exercises. But I'll give you a couple of real simple ones, and there's a reason why I'm giving you at least two. Uh, the first one is sort of like getting the nut crack open. It's, sort of, it's a basic technique. It's not an advanced technique. Mm-hmm. But it, it can kind of, it's sort of like if a bolt is all rusted shut, and you can't get it open. You sort of like have to hit it with a hammer a few times and maybe spray some oil on it. <laughs> you know? So if somebody's kind of stuck in their body or they're kind of in a rut, this is a simple exercise. It's not very advanced, but it works really well. And it's a simple exercise. I'll, I'll, if you want, I'll get anybody that wants to practice it, they can do it right now. So what you basically do is hopefully if you have a chair, you sit down and notice the room you're in. Like, notice behind you, like, the furniture and everything around you with your physical eyes. You look, take a look at it. And then you close your eyes. And now what you do is you imagine a point about four feet behind your head. And you jump in the soul body to that point. So you're looking behind yourself in your physical body. So, so you're you, looking, del- you deliberately project yourself to that focal point. Right, so now you're looking behind your head. And you just put your attention that that area behind your head, almost like a like a key a TV camera. And what you can do, now you can there are ways of making it easier. You can chant the word you, which is pronounced um like hue is in the color hue. And the way we usually do it is we'll do the H separate, so we'll go H and then l- draw out the U. So it's spelled H-U. And so you might close your eyes and um, take a few deep breaths. And then you chant H-U. And then you, you can do that a few times, five, six times, seven times, whatever feels comfortable. And then you can try jumping, jumping out of your, <laughs> jumping to this this point about four feet behind you, and you'll see um, your physical body to the back of your head. Now at that point, you're out of your body. You're not that far out of your body, but you're out of your body for sure because you placed your attention there. And now from there, you can hover up above the ceiling, look down. You can visit. You can go someplace. In the physical world, you can meet a, a particular master. Um, so that's sort of just an exercise to get your to get you loosened up. And one of the significances of of learning soul projection or, or more advanced form of out of body travel is that its purpose is to actually return to God, to actually return home to God. So we're not doing it just for entertainment no. or, you know, for some frivolous thing to <laughs> of that nature. But right. the purpose is actually to return to God and to spiritual freedom. Right. Um, uh, <laughs> this is a weird kind of understanding, but um, 99.8% of souls in the lower worlds, including Earth and other planets, are not spiritually free. But the illusions are so powerful, like the movie Matrix. They're so incredibly My powerful. My absolute favorite movie. Yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Good movie. Um, because it, it's such a perfect analogy for, for the way the spiritual Matrix in the lower worlds actually behaves. It, What's it, interesting... Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. What's interesting about the Matrix, yeah, we like, we like it a lot too, <laughs> is that if you notice in that movie, Neo goes through this paradigm shift and he realizes the unreality of of this illusion. But it's like he jumps into another paradigm, but he's still under illusion. It's almost like you're in a tiny closet, and then you leave the closet and you go into a bedroom. So you, you've expanded your 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 freedom, but you're still in a bedroom and trapped in that larger matrix, so to speak. And this is the nature of these different planes, is that... They get bigger and bigger. You have more and more freedom. It's it's less and less 
matter and more and more spirit, but it's still uh, a prison cell. It's just a bigger prison cell. And so what one of the things we learned in Vardenkar is how to when we map out these different planes, and we have a chart that kind of gives you an idea of, of what we're talking about. If you go to um, the Vardenkar website, V-A-R-D-A-N-K-A-R, Vardenkar.com, you'll see a chart that shows you know these different planes. And um, so you can, once you start to understand that uh, there's there's no real common language amongst people that are into spiritual subject matter or metaphysics or you know people that are into metaphysics or they're into religion or they're into into new age um, different paths astral projection whatever you want to call it there's no common language and so there's a lot of confusion but once you start to understand how it works how these different planes are like traps inside of traps, kind of like a prison. You have the cell that the inmate's in, but then when he gets out of that, he's in the courtyard. But then when he gets out of that, right. you know, it's right. like walls inside walls inside walls. And so somebody escapes their prison cell, mm-hmm. but they're still in the prison. It's still on prison grounds, right, right. Yeah. So they really haven't escaped the prison. They've escaped the cell. And then, of course, they find them. It almost reminds me of, like, an onion that has different layers. Um, Ah, You brought this mm. analogy up before where, like, in the Matrix, he wakes up from one layer, and then he finds himself in another, but he feels like he's totally woken up. In a sense, that happens a lot um, to souls. That could be a dangerous trap that when one thinks they're actually liberated, that they Mm -hmm. just get complacent and they stay and play on this particular plane for however long. And to that's exactly, of years right. that's right. exactly what happens, actually, and it happens to countless souls. Is it's just like the Matrix? In the Matrix, he he, in a sense, is work, wait, almost like waking up to astral consciousness. The astral plane is like the invisible world. When people develop psychic abilities, suddenly they can see this invisible world, and they're like, "Wow, I woke up!" But what a lot of people don't realize is that they've woken up to like the first layer of the onion and it's so beautiful and profound and they can see angels and they can see heavenly sights and wonders but there are many layers to this sort of onion or matrix and what makes it even more complicated is simple similar to the physical plane for example in the in the earth let's take something really tiny like the earth you know we have different experiences on the earth like you could be in hawaii and you could be lying in a hammock you know or next to a waterfall, and you could feel like it's just amazingly beautiful and serene and happy. Or you could be in the middle of a desert, in a war-torn desert, where you've got machine gun fire, and uh, it's hot, extremely hot, and barren, and just very unpleasant. And yet those are all parts of the Earth. And so the astral plane has many sub-regions, you see. So it gets complicated. So there's a spiritual law which is that a master, a spiritual master, cannot take his chilas or or students any farther than he has actually gone himself. So if you're studying with a teacher or guru or master, um, anybody like that, if they haven't reached beyond, let's say, the mid-astral plane, they're going to be able to take you further than that. There's, there are many people that will have these incredible experiences in the astral plane or the mental plane, and it will be so profound that they will think that they reached God-realization or self-realization when it's sort of like they've reached sort of like an astral enlightenment or a certain experience on one of these subplanes. Um, but it's, you know, it's sort of like a, a journey, and that's why we, we've found it vital. We've worked with these very ancient masters, mm. Um, Just like we learned on Sirius, there were these ancient masters millions of years ago, and they they would take their students under their wing as sort of like a spiritual apprenticeship and teach them this galactic and spiritual wisdom of learning, you know, the process of learning to leave the physical body and dwell in these heavenly planes and dimensions or um, realms and, and, you know, universes. And so it's it's a whole process of spiritual unfoldment because the goal is to graduating from reincarnation, spiritual liberation, and to achieve this a very high level of spiritual liberation where the person doesn't have to reincarnate anymore unless they want to, 
and they become sort of, you could say, a direct agent of God or a direct co-worker with God. And um, it's significant because these, these ancient masters, um, like the ancient masters I've spoken of about Planet Ceres, um, they work one-on-one -on -one with their students and sort of like teach them all of the different steps of unfolding themselves spiritually. And it's a process. It, it, it's a difficult process. Mm -hmm. um, I find it kind of amusing that people recognize that anything that's difficult takes a teacher. You know, you wouldn't want to say you're, you want to be a brain surgeon, <laughs> but you're going to learn it on your own. I mean, anybody that has any kind of mm -hmm. intelligence would say, well, maybe I need some t people to help me learn brain surgery. So you're looking at something that's one of the most, it's the most difficult thing anyone will do is to reach these higher states it can be done in a single lifetime, but it's certainly not something that's as easy as, let's say, learning to play the guitar mm. or, or learning to sing or learning to play piano. Well, I can tell you, learning to play guitar took me <laughs> many, know, many right? years. Exactly. Let, let me ask you, you a question. Let me ask you guys a question. Yeah. I, I have stepped in these arenas quite often in my life, not so much at will, and that's why I'm really passionate in hanging on every word that you are saying, both of you. I remember uh, having a, I was conscious, I was lucid, but I was in a castle, and this castle felt something like, it was, it had a dark, luminous feel to it, and these two beautiful, naked, voluptuous women were trying to seduce me, and when I scanned them from toe to head, um, they had a cat-looking face, and it, did, it didn't feel right. And I start to walk away, and they said, where are you going? I said, I'm going outside. And they said, you don't want to go in the sun. The sun is going to burn you. I said, that's exactly why I'm doing it. So, <laughs> so when I walked outside, so when I walked outside, I, I began to feel this purifying fire. It, would, it burned, but it wasn't painful. And I, I blacked out. I, was, I found myself coming to laying on my back in a meadow. And when I opened my eyes in this meadow, uh, there was a very tall cross. And I remember... And keep in mind, this was in black and white and, and probably implying my past. And I begin to do this sit-up type crunch thing and I yelled out this one long drone mantra and the word was love. And as I, and I did that sit-up crunch and as I did that, I can hear, oh my God, I can hear God. Uh, and everything from my past ever spoken, everything ever heard in one of my ears, just passing by very fastly. And in my third eye, I saw images since the beginning of my life to that point. And I left my body. I went through a wormhole. And when I got out of this wormhole, I was in a, uh, an absolute void. And in this void, even though it was dark, I can see because it was my awareness that was illuminating this void. And I was prompted to look above me, and I did, and there was these 12 angels. Now, I don't know if they were very, very tall and far away, or if they were average size and somewhat close, but they begin this maypole dance in this circle kind of thing. And then they swooshed off, and in their swooshing, I was pulled into the current. And I, brought, I was brought through layer, through layer, through layer, until I stopped. And when I stopped, I knew, and it wasn't Keith imagining or uh, contriving, I knew this is what we call the Godhead. And the reason I stopped is because I'm the one that had a thought. My thought is what stopped me. It's what separated me from it. But anyway, they gave me a glimpse. And when the curtain was pulled back, oh my God. The only way I could describe it is kind of like in the Matrix 2. Do you remember when they were in the caverns and they were doing that tribal dance of celebratory and... It mm -hmm. felt just like that. And they said, Keith, you're welcome to come in here. And in that moment, I chose not to because I wasn't per se afraid of physically dying. I just knew that my identity, everything I thought was right, wrong, good, bad, hot, cold, that was all just going to be shattered. And I wasn't quite ready for that. So would you both say that doing the exploration that you do, not only does it help alleviate one's identity to the body and physical death, but it also creates a fire, a passion for cosmic life. It actually, what you just said is significant. It, it creates, when you, when you shift just out-of-body travel to actual soul projection with the masters, you shift to this burning desire to return to God, to we call Hure, um, and, and this desire... Uh, sort of like is like a fire. We call it like the holy fire of God. 
and it and it creates such a profound and deep feeling of love for all life and for God that one feels compelled like a rocket to work towards um, that goal to study to learn to leave the physical body it's not necessarily an easy thing to go through the spiritual tests or testing that is required um, to move to the higher levels and and yes ultimately it is out of body travel the whole entire purpose is to unite with the Godhead directly into the ocean of love and mercy which is a world of such great luminosity and light and sound that it, it is very profound um, when somebody reaches that point they reach uh, what is called God realization but I have to I have to add that, that sure. it's not so much it's deceiving because you're you're really you never lose your individuality right so you're beca- you become a conscious coworker so it's deceiving because a lot of people when they hear unite with the godhead they think in terms of nirvana or they think in terms of what they call cosmic consciousness but this is way way beyond cosmic consciousness where you become passive this is this is something where it's indescribable, but you become this conscious agent, and you you maintain your individuality, and yet you have the realization of God. You see the face of God, which of course is not male nor female. I use the analogy often, physical. Alan and Heather. I use the analogy often when I do talks about out of body travel, or not not necessarily out of body travel, but who you really are. And we're we can liken this to looking at the hand, the, our physical hand. We see ourselves as separate. And we're individual fingers on the hand. But we see ourselves as separate because we focus on the empty space in between the two. But in truth, what we really are is we all each a knuckle that is connected to the whole hand, which is God in the first place. Mm -hmm. So basically, Uh we're we're just an extension of that, the wholeness. And then we get to the, I guess it's called, I, I might be mistaken, the divine ego where we actually have an identity. And we still can maintain our connection to the source, and then we express it down on the physical plateau. Yes. Oh yes, that's a that's a good way to put it. I like to, I like the analogy of the water in the ocean. Oh, absolutely. And the, that it's really one of the secrets to the whole thing is surrender, and and becoming. Um, humility is a difficult thing, because you have to empty your bucket. It's sort of like imagine a five-gallon container. Or, or imagine a glass, and I come to you, and it's filled with dirty water that's old and smelly, and I say, fill my glass. Well, the first thing you're going to say is, well, dump the old water out. Because there's no point in you dumping fresh, clean water into a glass that's already filled with dirty water. Because you're just mm. going to dilute the dirty water. You're not going to, you know, it's not going to help me to drink water that's half, half dirty. And so... Until we're willing to be humble and empty our cup of what we believe we know, what we think is truth, that until we have that humility, we're always in this position of the ego being in conflict with the Varden, which is the Holy Spirit. Now, this Holy Spirit appears as light and can be heard as sound, the sound current or the audible life stream, and it's very important, because there's a wave that issues out from the Godhead, or the Ocean of Mercy, that issues out, and this is a, a wave that consists of sound and light, and it creates, it sustains and creates everything. And so we can grab back onto the returning wave. There's a wave that comes down that sustains and creates, and then there's a returning wave that returns back to the Godhead, and we can grab onto this returning wave and and ride it through the soul projection. I, I think Heather wanted you wanted to say something. Yeah, what it is is the living Varden Master, the Margotma, the Sinner Master, connects or links the student with this returning sound wave that returns to God. And there's also another thing too, and not many people know about this. There are different people that will have experiences of. Of, they'll say, I had an experience with God, or I had an experience that was in a very high place. 
Um, but one of the things that a lot of people don't know about is on these different planes, each spiritual plane has a sort of transformer or power matrix that acts as a transformer or lowered or lowered vibration version of, of you could say God, like a it's Lord, a ruler. a ruler. And then that ruler has so much light and power and energy that people will mistake these different rulers for God because they'll see it and it looks like a tremendous light and it will have so much love or so much power to it. Yeah. And on each of these spiritual planes is something of that form, only at a higher vibration with, right. with uh, more spirit and less matter, the higher you go. I've learned, Everything's about I've, vibration. I've learned a lot of this. by. <laughs> I just mm-hmm. moved into a house, and I went to the mm-hmm. attic to see what was up mm-hmm. there so I can clear it out to put my stuff in it, and I found a box. And in this box was a book by Paul Twitcher called The Tiger's Fang. Oh yeah, excellent. And book. I, I, oh my God, I love that book. I sat, I read it's it three times book, consecutively, yeah. and he described exactly that on every level. There is someone yes. in the seat that governs what happens on this dimension. We're at the bottom Absolutely. of the hour, Center of Light Radio. My, my guest today is Heather Jamboy and Alan Feldman. Would you please give out your contact information of all sorts so our listening audience could find out more about you and your powerful work, uh, helping people to return to source www.bardankar.com And I should mention that there is a long lineage of masters, and Paul Twitchell was actually one of the Varden masters. And prior to him, there were other masters. And um, Al, Now, um, Alan, Alan, who we're speaking to on this call, he is actually the current living Varden master. It's a temporary position. Yeah. Bro, just being uh, honored with the accolade of the position is validation, yeah. I think. that's a wonderful book yeah so let me let me ask you one of the greatest books ever written everything you guys are describing i've experienced from the higher realms even to the earthly realms uh i had a friend of mine some years ago my spiritual mentor who kind of whispered some metaphysical things in my ear when i needed most in my life he put me what's called through a rebirthing session where you breathe like mad (gasps) and then you do this for an hour or however long it takes and I find myself vibrating, oh, God, like I'm plugged into a generator. And I black out for like 30 seconds. And then I come back, and I didn't have any experience whatsoever. And I assume that I just fell asleep for 30 seconds, and I woke up. The next day, I go to a nightclub where I was playing music, and a friend of mine walks in, and it all comes back. <laughs> I was in her car looking down on an event, her wiping her seat with a white towel. I was at the dome light consciously. And I called her over to me and I explained to her I was in your car last night. She goes, Keith, you weren't in my car last night. She goes, I was with my boyfriend. I said, well, I was in your car last night. She said, how so? And she said, this is one of those weird spiritual things. I said, please play this out with me. It's important. She said, okay. I said, I saw you wiping your seat with a piece of white material. And I named what she was wearing and all these different things. And, of course, her face is starting to drop. (laughs) And Tammy is the person, everywhere Tammy goes, she drives. She's never the passenger. But also, how often are you the passenger in your own car? It just so happens that day at 5 o'clock when I had this experience, she left the window open in her car that night before it rained. She said, Keith, the white towel is still in my back seat. He was the one driving my car. And yes, I was wearing these clothes. <laughs> and that <laughs> solidified something in me. It, I had another layer of freedom via that experience many years ago in my life. Yeah, these, these experiences... Um can be very dear to us. What we find eventually is we learn to die daily. And it's not that we're dying, you know, it's not that we're dying to, literally in the sense that, you know, our physical, our heart stops or anything like that. But we're dying in consciousness and in going into these other states. And then we return to the body because all of this, frankly, all of this exists simultaneously. Right. As I'm sure you <laughs> figured that out. Yeah. That this is all simultaneous. What it gets a little confusing is I'll say, well, you go here, you go there. He's like, well, if I go there, then aren't I? I'm not here anymore. Like, doesn't my heart stop? Or isn't there danger that I'm leaving my body now? You know, who's going to watch my body? You know. <laughs> yeah, and, I've, heard, uh, I've heard all those stories and those myths. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then people always did. Sorry. Oh. Um, part of the process is that. Um, the Varden masters, when they work with students in this spiritual apprenticeship, they bring them through a series of different kinds of spiritual experiences that happen progressively at higher, at a higher level of spiritual planes. So when someone is first starting, 
they might begin by visiting the astral plane. Of course, under protection, because I, I wouldn't advise out-of-body travel unless you're studying with somebody who's a true, truly God-realized and truly knows how to protect you. Um, and they might start by visiting the astral plane, and there's a, a temple of golden wisdom that different Varden students will visit on the astral plane. Then when they advance... Oh, ma- mention the name, please. N- oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can tell us. Um, yeah, yeah, the names of the different spiritual planes. Like, for example, on the astral plane, there is a temple called Asclepiosis. And and the master there is Gopal Das. He was the master during ancient Egypt. And you can see some beautiful drawings of these masters if you go to the uh, Vardenkar website. And then above the astral plane, when students advance and have more out-of-body experiences there, eventually they graduate the astral plane, which is the causal plane, which is the plane of the Akashic Records, the plane of memory where you start to have flashes of past lives, and they study at the Sakapuri Golden Wisdom Temple with a master named Shamas Tabriz. And then above that, um, I forgot to say colors, like the causal plane has a golden orange light. And then above that is the mental plane. There are some people that do, um, instead of soul, uh, astral travel, they do mind travel, but we use the soul body. And there uh, students will visit a temple of golden wisdom called Nam Yatan. And then above that is etheric plane. Now, all of these planes are sort of in the lower worlds. They, the higher you go, the incredible, the more incredible and, and brilliant the light and the more high vibration it is. In fact, each plane feels so high that it feels like you've reached the ultimate when in fact it's still in the worlds of reincarnation wow the lower wow world. wow wow when you both when you're out there in there <laughs> when, you're in, <laughs> when you're inside of yourself and you're treading over these different dimensions i'm going to assume something i'm going to assume that there's an automatic knowing that happens between these different planes. When you came from one and you went to the other, let's say you you guys hit a new plane that you've never been to before or new experience. Immediately, I would think that there's a knowing that begins to happen of what's happening here, what this is, where you are, who's the head of it. I mean, is there a knowing that is encrypted with each place you go to? It's funny that you say that because um, because knowingness, when, when... when a person is like, for instance, they're in the causal plane, they have this intuition that is so close to the soul plane that it feels like a knowingness where they, you're in touch with soul. But knowingness is the faculty of soul, which is your pure, true self, a spark of God that has no lower bodies, no astral body, no physical body, no mental body. It's just pure soul. And with knowingness, you don't even have to think about it. You just know something, a spirit. It's just natural to you. And knowingness comes from these, you know, true knowingness comes from the soul plane and above. And so when a person actually goes beyond the lower worlds I just described into the God worlds, which are the worlds of total awareness and pure freedom, where you are Mm. omnipresent, Mm. um, those worlds you have knowingness, you have beingness, and you have seeingness. In other words, you're, you're totally aware and that knowingness, when you listen to the knowingness instead of your mind and your beliefs, the knowingness will show you how to take the steps you need to take to move towards God instead of more reincarnations. I would now, like, if you'd like... Go, go ahead, Alan, go ahead. Uh, oh, that's another exercise. <laughs> you just read my mind. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. I just yeah, you just read it. my mind. That's what I was going to The first inter- one was inter- more of a beginner's exercise, just to get put your big toe in the river. <laughs> 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 so yeah, just I was just Keith, I'll just let you know whenever you're ready. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm definitely ready. And then I would like to move on, if you guys would, uh, we could talk maybe a little bit about your past life experience on Sirius. Absolutely. Sure. So yeah, I'm, I'm ready for this this uh, exercise. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, it would be really helpful if your listeners had the the God Wells chart in front of them. If I don't know, not everybody's on the. Can, can surf the net while they're listening to your program, but mm-hmm. if they can, they just go to Vardenkar.com, V-A-R-D-A-N-K-A-R.com, and they'll see a chart on, on page one. There's another one. There's a more complicated one, but this, that should be sufficient. And it says, The, the God Heavens Worlds of Vardenkar. 
so I don't know if they found that yet. But that this will be helpful. But anyway, you find that chart. You can print it if you want. And what we're going to do is we're going to chant. Um, we're going to chant the word Hugh, which is an ancient name for God. Uh, I'll, I'll just should I just walk us through the exercise? It's yeah, a little more complicated. Sure. Yeah, just walk us through. So what we're going to do is we're going to chant Hugh, and then we're going to chant the names, the sounds, or the words for these different planes, and we'll just move up in vibration. So it's a it's it's a simple exercise, but it's a little. This is much more advanced, but it doesn't. You don't really have to know what to expect in order to do it, because you're tuning into the sound. So you don't have to have an idea what you're doing. It's sort of you just simply follow directions. It's like making a souffle. <laughs> just do it. Do what the cookbook <laughs> says. Do the souffle. Right. You don't have to know what eggs are and you know stuff. So um, okay. So first thing we do is we sit down. If you can't sit down, you can lie in a a bed, you know, it's better to sit, but, you know, back straight if possible. Relax and take six deep breaths. Preferably do this in a quiet environment. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to chant Q, like we did before, H U, just for a little while. And then we're going to pause and we're going to go on to the next plane. So we're going to basically chant hue, and then we're going to go to alai, which is the physical sound, and then kala, which is the astral sound, and then we're going to chant mana, which is the causal, and then we're going to chant om, which a lot of people are familiar with, that's the mental, and then we're going to chant baju, which is the etheric, and then we're going to chant hure, which is we're each letter individually, and that's the soul plane. And then we're going to chant Shanti, which is the sixth plane. So that should be that should be enough to get your feet wet for sure. So here we go. I hope this isn't too long an exercise, but we'll try to make we'll make it brief. If that's okay, I don't want to. Okay, so we take a few deep breaths. H U H U Alei 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 Shanti. 
That was sort of a speeded up version of it. Obviously, you can do it longer. So, what is a person to expect or not expect to have happen? Uh, I'm sure this is like any sort of muscle, spiritual muscle, that it takes time and practice to begin to exercise this aspect of ourselves for it to expand. Would that be true? It, in general, however, anything can happen. Well, what you're doing is you're you're learning how to place your awareness and attention. Um, in a particular place or, or vibration. And when you place your attention there, for instance, if a word is resonates with that vibration or that plane and you're chanting it, some people will begin doing this and then they will start to become conscious of that particular plane. They might begin to see a certain color of light or hear a particular type of sound or they might actually you know, experience seeing um, you know, this heavenly world and, and certain things like they might, if they're on the astral plane, they might suddenly see the astral museum or whatever it is that comes to them. But by learning to place our attention there, we're learning to consciously travel there and it's a process of unfoldment. And, the, and these, these mantras, calling out these different names, these are basically like golden keys unlocking golden doors, right? Exactly, exactly. Love it, yeah. love it, love it. Years ago, I had an experience. I was out and about, in and about, and when it came to a state of awareness, this angel had me in her arms, her, him, it, flying down this street. And everything was consumed by this purple fire. And I knew it wasn't a destructive fire. I knew it was a divine fire. All the buildings are firing ahead of us. And I, I look over me to see who's carrying me, flying with me, or flying me. And it was an angel, and it had the Prince Valiant type look. I'm sure this is something my mind concocted to help me understand what was happening. But he kind of nods for me to look in front of where we're going, and there's this huge uh, tree, bigger than any tree I've ever seen in my life, and it's full of this purple fire. And he basically smiles and sends me a message, we're about to fly into this thing, Keith. And so we flew into this tree, and I find myself in a high-rise building, multiple times higher than the most highest building on Earth. And we're on the top floor, and all the walls in this penthouse were made of glass and you could see everywhere you can even see the curvature of the earth and i'm so giddy because i can float and play in the ceiling and in the material <laughs> walls as i begin to ascend into the ceiling the angel pulls me down by grabbing my leg and sits me in the, on the sofa and pats on the sofa here you go keith sit here and the phone rings and he looks to me and he says aren't you going to answer I said what do you mean answer he goes keith you actually live here so this was a multi-dimensional experience of another life of mine. So I wanted you guys to talk a little bit, if you can. We have about, let's see, 10 minutes, 9 minutes. Oh. Tell me about your experience uh, in your other life with the, uh, and Alan, your ooh, was that something that I triggered on you that you wanted to say at the moment? Oh, no, no, not at all. That place is just something you can try at home if you want. Oh, by all I means. Mean, we, by all means. We were yeah. surprised that 10 minutes is left. <laughs> wow, it went fast. <laughs> right, right? Time's an yeah. illusion. <laughs> and I believe it or not, so I'm, I'm buzzing over here. You want to I, talk about the serious life? I or? can start. Um, yeah. Basically, what happened was when we were writing our book um, and we reached the third chapter, we both had this profound flash of a... Of seeing what are called the soul records, which is the heaven of self-realization. The soul records are completely different than the Akashic records, and they're much more complete. And so we saw ourselves in this lifetime. Um, in that particular life uh, on planet Sirius, Alan was 800 years old, 
which on Ceres uh, they have completely different lifespans. So 800 is 800 is like a 24 year old, right. <laughs> right. and in that particular lifetime, I was like about 4,800 years old, which would be someone in their 60s. And um, we were both practicing the same exact thing that we're practicing now. It was Vardenkar, except it had a different name back then. Um, but the purpose of it was um, we studied with a in this particular lifetime on this planet Ceres. It's a planet that has two luminous suns, and a, it was a golden age, so you know much more positive. And so we would have these meetings. You um, forgot to mention the most important thing. Oh yes, yes. Well, you were the master back then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love well, I, it. Yeah, in, in I love life, it. I was the living yeah. garden master, and and the purpose was to teach the students to become masters themselves, that they could reach this state called Jaipan Mukti, which means graduating from reincarnation. Spiritual liberation. Yeah, so they could graduate from reincarnation, and the wheel of eighty four by learning this form of soul projection. Why is it called the wheel of eighty four? What is the significance of eight and four? Is oh, it because boy, you add eight and four away. and it's twelve and it's a four number? <laughs> is that right? Um, this might seem a little overwhelming or even scary, but the 84 implies 8,400,000 uh, uh, lives, I believe, reincarnations. There, there are it's years. Wow. Yeah, years. Sorry. But years. Ba- basically, it's, you go through all the signs of the zodiac. One mm-hmm. of the, one of the things we teach is don't don't identify with your present incarnation as yeah. far as your your personality, your sex, your you know all this stuff because the wheel of 84, you're going, you're experiencing everything. Well, what it is, is is on this wheel of 84, which comes to millions of lifetimes, you go through these ages. You go through the Golden Age, or Satya Yuga, which is uh, 1,728,000 years. Then there's the Silver Age, where it becomes slightly less positive, and discord, a slight amount of discord is introduced. You know, um, ancient Lemuria was the Golden Age, so it was a much more positive on Earth. Um, ancient Atlantis, there was more discord introduced. Um, and then in Copper Age, it becomes half positive and half negative. And then finally, Kali Yuga, which the age we're in now, maybe the golden part, I don't know. Um, so Ceres was a golden age. Yes, yeah, so Ceres was a golden toward age. Toward the end, or the, a little bit toward the end of the golden age. So they had very long lifespans. Um, so, you know, they, they could live uh, a number of thousands of years. And, and because of that, a lot of the students really took their time in terms of learning, because Sometimes when when a planet is in a golden age, there feels like there's no hurry, and it gives this profound illusion that you've already reached a very high level when maybe you've only been to the astral plane. So that was a big problem that the master had with a, a lot of the population and with his students was that this sort of golden age apathy where they believed that they would reach a high level and just sort of hang out in the astral plane. <laughs> so um, one of the things that... that uh, we would do is we would we would meet regularly as a class every week, and and God and you know Alan would be there. We knew each other. We were good friends back then. <laughs> and, I was I was I was um, gosh as uh, gosh as I was the name of him. Heather was in a male in that incarnation, and I was a male, and uh, I was his I was a chila or a student of of his, but I was also a a um, initiate. I was in, on the path. And we would study together. Um, we'd all get into this room, and there was extremely high vibration feeling, like sparkling particles of light or like sort of like ocean air. And we'd, I'd open up the Sharia, which is the um, Book of the Masters. And it was really thick and big. It was like about, what, a... Uh, 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 three feet long and two feet wide. I would wide. imagine so. <laughs> Huge. You know, we were really actually, big. We were I, I, sh- I forgot to say that. The serious people were roughly about, what was it, 24 feet high total? So yeah, wow. so we're translating everything into sh- what I call series feet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so when we say it's very, it was that big, yeah. it was actually much bigger. But it was pretty big. Relative to uh, us. So the humans. Um, and and Sirius had a you know an interesting and much more resilient anatomy. They had two hearts and anyway that's a long story. But um, in any case uh, we we would I'd open up the chariot and then we would I would we basically the students would all study together about out of body travel and how to reach the state of this 
you know, reaching the states of the secrets of Jiva and Mukti and God realization. So, which um, is beyond. Yeah, so the goals are I would teach them about self realization and God realization, which is to basically learn to consciously dwell in these much higher levels of heaven, like Alan was talking about the soul plane and the Anami Lok, which is the God plane. That's the tenth plane. So the soul plane is the fifth, and the Anami Lok and above. Is the, is the area of God realization, the 10th, 11th, and 12th, and, and beyond that. And so what it is, is in every era there is always a living Bard and Master. And, um, and, and what it, when, one, when one Bard and Master passes, then another Bard and Master takes his place, and he gives souls this opportunity to graduate from the lower worlds of reincarnation. May I say, did mm-hmm. you want to hear a little bit about the technology and all that? I don't know if that's something... Actually, you... I would like to save that. I'm just so digging this. Believe it or not, we have two minutes left. Oh, yeah. Let's, can we make this a part two and get you guys back really soon? That would just be beyond phenomenal. It sounds we, fun to me. We couldn't extend it another ten minutes. <laughs> I okay. wish I, I, I could, but the problem is I only have a, an hour window before another show kicks in. Could you uh, leave yeah. us with sure, the? Sure. Could you leave us with a final thought from each of you quickly? Because we we're pushing time. <laughs> mm-hmm. You want to go first, Heather? Oh, you can go. Oh, uh, final thought. Final thought would be, um, you have to be bold, adventurous, and cunning, and resourceful. And you have to love God more than you love the things of this world mm. if you want to have these experiences. And they can be achieved even by those who aren't bold if you have this love in your heart for God. You can learn to be bold. But you, have, you can't. The love has to be something that's there. And no matter how spiritually advanced that you feel, if they truly desire freedom, they can transcend their karma and transcend reincarnation and graduate from these worlds of time and space. And become a conscious co-worker. Of, with God. Which is the key. Yeah. I love the way you guys play off each other. It's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, y'all, y'all just chimed in and out, while. in and out. It was great. <laughs> Heather and Alan, thank you. I, I'm blessed to have met you both, and you can bet I'm going to put these exercises into practice. And I will keep That'd you be- posted on my progress, so thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's been wonderful to be on the yes, air with you. Yes, it Enjoyed it. Good always interview. stay in touch. That door is always open to you both. Thank Everyone, you so Heather much. and Alan, uh, you can find more about their gorgeous, delicious work at soultravelagent.com. Keith Anthony Blanchard. Oh, actually, the oh, no, no, Bardencar no. website would it, be better. Yeah, Go again, give it up. V a r d a n k a r dot com. One more time for me. Oh. Give it up. Oh, v a r d a n k a r. Dot com and we're on YouTube as well. Thank you guys. Much appreciated. Everyone, Keith Anthony Blanchard, your host of Center of Light Radio, Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find me sitting here in this captain's chair conducting affairs of the heart, opening up that stargate so you can get back home to your divine parents so you can be liberated. I look forward to seeing you. And next week, my guest is going to be, check this out, he returns, Jason Quit. This guy is hot on the scene. He's an interdimensional time traveler. And he's very quick-witted. He knows his stuff. Uh, It's kind of like a part two of this show here, but a little different slant. I look forward to seeing you next week. Remember, when you have nothing to do at night, since you're laying there breathing, going to sleep, you might as well breathe on purpose. Because when you do, something begins to happen. And that something is a profound, deafening silence. And in that silence is everything you can possibly imagine that you desire and deserve. I look forward to seeing you next week. Peace, love, and light.